Um, a lovely, lovely to meet you. I was saying to Mal earlier that you've been to South Africa twice before, and I've been a music journalist for 30 odd years, and I've never, ever spoken to you. I've spoken to all of your peers, but never to you, which um, is... Well, we finally sorted that out. Tragic, yes, tragic. But um, thank you for, for taking the time. Um, I also heard the interview you did on BBC uh, over the weekend on your day off, which... Uh, which was a lovely interview with with Stuart and Mark. Um, so, uh, yeah. well, I mean, we go, I go back. I mean, Mark, um, Stuart came to see us play back in 1979, I think, at the college he was attending. So I've got a long history there and, and Mark's a lovely guy as well. So. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but we don't want to talk about that because every, everything in your um, around the new album and obviously the tour is the fact that you've been going for 45 years and you're like, going, mm. you don't need to remind me of that because... You know, I think you're one of the best looking bands who have been doing this for 45 years. You certainly don't look like it. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, I must admit, I've, I've been so busy for the last few months that I haven't really been able to um, stay as fit as I would like. Mm. Um, because <laughs> we, see, we seem to have fallen victim to have, de have d delivered a very well-received album. So it is absolutely non-stop at the moment. We were doing um, an in-store in Kingston uh, on Thames yesterday. Uh, we've got a signing today. We've got a radio, live radio on Virgin. We've got, but you know what? Mm. It's great. You know, if, if you spend a long time making an album that you're proud of, you have to take your artist hat off and put your salesman's hat on because you want people to know it's out. Absolutely. And I mean, <clears throat> to say without banging on about the point that it's been 45 years, are you are you surprised that um, you still have new music in you? Very much so, because I think Paul and I felt that we were probably coming coming to a logical end. Um, the Punishment of Luxury album was very well received, and we felt it was a very good collection of songs. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the the bottom line the bottom line. Uh, Jason, it's quite simply that um, I don't think this album would have existed if it wasn't for COVID. Yeah. Because there was nothing else to do. There was yeah. nothing else to do. So I found myself locking myself away in my programming room and um, just saying, well, you've got nothing else to do. So all those songs that you couldn't get a vocal for or you couldn't finish the verse, now is the time to do it, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think, you know, everyone has a COVID story. Yours is certainly a positive one, which I think is fantastic. Mm. And I think... Um, testimony to you know your ability and your professionalism to kind of power through it all and um, I think we all learned a whole bunch of new skills during the pandemic and um, by the sounds of it the new record is uh, is bristling with just yeah some a, a lot of um, freshness for lack of a better term but you know it's good it's nice to be fresh after 45 years <laughs> yes <laughs> but what do you think it is in your opinion that that keeps people coming back and, and obviously the audience keeps growing and evolving. But what what do you in your in your personal opinion, what do you think it is about what OMD does that is so evergreen? How do I answer this without sounding like a big headed narcissist? Um I think I think the bottom line is that we we refuse to do something poorly just because we want the money or we feel like we need to tour. I mean, as Paul always likes to say, we don't make a new album because we want a new logo on the tour T-shirt, you know? Um, we release a new album because we think we've got a complete album full of strong music. And, and you know, it was hard work, this last album, you know, month after month after month after month, grinding it out. Now, listen, is it, is it like working down a coal mine? Is it like working overnight shifts, stacking shelves or driving a truck? No, but it's dependent upon you finding, you know, digging for your own gold inside yourself and finding yeah. some. And nine times out of 10, you don't, and you just have to persevere. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it, it's an awful lot of, of perseverance and patience and hard work to finally come up with what we believe if we give ourselves enough time we trust our editorial abilities to know we've got good stuff yeah you know um and i you know i'm not going to name any names but there are bands around who've been going for a long time who 
you know, they churn out dross just because they feel they need to have something new to talk yeah. with and they yeah. shouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, if you if you look at your own history, I mean, you've you have made it through more than four decades of a very, you know, each landscape vastly different from the one before. Obviously, where you started, it was familiar territory because that was that was kind of what everyone, well, not everyone was doing, but it, it was a familiar sound. But yet, you didn't... It wasn't familiar when we started, Jason. I mean, starting in 78, yes. it was very unfamiliar playing playing synth music in new wave clubs. Yes, we yes. Were, for, for the first couple of years, we were swimming against the tide. Yeah, you and Ultravox. No, yeah. no, <laughs> nobody would have predicted hmm. that um, that what we were doing in 78, hmm. you know, two years later, we would be riding the crest of a wave of the big new international music sound of English synth pop. Yeah. You know, yeah, when we yeah. first started out, we, we, we got a lot of criticism and abuse from people and journalists in particular. So, hmm. but yeah, you know, I mean, the landscape has changed and we've had to roll with it. We've had ups and downs, which hmm. you, you, you can only expect after all this sure, time. Sure. But yet, you know, you're coming into, you know, the, obviously the new album came out on Friday and, and there is this distinct feeling that I have that, um, you're kind of right back at that wave when you were, you know, in the top 10 uh, back in, you know, when when it started to turn for you, because this is a, a, a monumental shift from the, the previous albums that all enjoyed their success. You toured them. They did. They did well. But th this one seems different. Does it does it feel like that for you? It is starting to feel like that. You know, when, when you make something, you're pulling ideas out and you're trying to sculpt them as best you can so that they're reflecting back to you as near 100% as you can get. So you feel like it's talking cleanly and, 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 in, and in a well-formed shape. Mm. But just because it talks to you doesn't mean it's going to talk to some a third party. Yeah. So, but, but you have to hope it will. And... I don't know what it is, whether, you know, we've just been consistent since we reformed 17 years ago, whether we, we always put 100% in and people can see it and feel it. But this album now feels like it's kind of a culmination of all the work we've done. Mm. And the reviews are amazing. Mm. And quite frankly, I can tell you now, because it's going to be official today here in England, if it wasn't for Taylor Swift, we'd be number one in the album chart. <laughs> but that's a big, if it wasn't for Taylor American. Swift... <laughs> Let the Americans. No, no, no. I take it. Take it. So we're, you know, we're we're ahead of the Rolling Stones. We're ahead of Duran Duran. We're ahead of James Blunt. We're ahead of Simple Minds. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's being very well received, and it feels, it feels great. Yeah, and uh, and and worthy um, because I think there's always that moment with any musician when you release something, even though you have this massive catalog. Um, to back you up um it's it must be terrifying <laughs> well i've equated in the past to you know it's um it's like standing in the front window of harrods and taking all your clothes off and going hi this is me what do you think and people go oh no thanks <laughs> it's crushing you know it's yeah. crushing it could go either way yes yeah what what is what about the new record excites you most I think I think the fact that it exists because genuinely, um, you know, we felt after punishment to luxury that uh, the, the one thing we always said was, you know, we weren't going to do something that would put any kind of downside on on our on our public perception. Oh. Um, you know, it's very cool to be an orchestra when it is in the dark. You know, possibly the, the coolest it's ever been. People say really nice things like we're iconic and influential and mm. blah, blah, blah. Um, so the last thing we want to do is fuck it all up with a shit yeah. album yeah. at the end of our career, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that, I, I, so I think that the, 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 the nice surprise is that we did get this album out mm. and from the feedback I'm getting, and you said, you used the word fresh, mm. a lot of people have said, it sounds like you're in your 20s. Mm. You've got so much energy yeah. and excitement and your singing is passionate. Mm. I'm like, well, yeah, because if you don't have energy, excitement and passion, mm. you shouldn't be making a record. Yeah. And, and, and so I was excited about the fact that the songs were coming together. I was excited about 
that I'd had ideas for years that I was able to start using, like Bauhaus staircase, mm. Anthropocene, kleptocracy, mm. evolution of species finally worked out. I was excited, and you, I think you hear the energy in my singing, mm. and you hear the energy in the music. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, it's going to be interesting, obviously, when you take this album out on the road, how it stacks up against, obviously, uh, the legacy of, of work. But <clears throat> just one last question before you head on, if I may. And um, I was just thinking about the world tour that's coming up. Obviously, your biggest in years, um, so no pressure there um, at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it must be... It must be absolute hell putting set lists together. We've done enough new records now where, you know, if we cherry pick, mm. you know, the prob the definite problem we've got is, again, it's a nice problem to have. Mm. Everybody seems to have different favourites on this album, which is indicative of the fact that there's not like three great songs and the rest is like, yeah. eh. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Which, again, lovely problem to have. We've dropped new songs into the set over the years, and they sit in. Okay. You know, they, they, they feel, you know, the acid test is if you play a new song and, and the audience don't all go to the bathroom, it's probably okay. It's working for you, you know? Yeah. So, um, but you have to, um, you have to balance it. There's no way we're going to play the whole album. Uh -huh. uh, because because we have we have well we we have this <laughs> dilemma that we've got to fit in about another fifteen hit singles because if we don't somebody will go you didn't play my favorite song and this, and this is this is the thing that if I were you on stage and and you're looking out at you know this this wall of people and you're going someone here tonight is going to leave disappointed <laughs> um, but they will they will yeah. have had an extraordinary experience and i think that's how i counted them in, in my head is that even if i don't get to hear enola gay or electricity or whatever the case may be you um, will hear those <laughs> you, there's no way you won't hear those you I promise you'll hear those. they won't let you leave otherwise yes you know i don't understand bands who have this ambivalent attitude towards their biggest hits it's like those things have made your career. They've been very good to you. Yeah. Treat them with respect yeah. and also treat your audience with respect. You know, play them properly. Don't mm. play them grudgingly. Mm. And also, you know, don't do not do an acoustic medley of them or some <laughs> shit like that. You know, <laughs> deliver them as people remember them. Exactly, exactly. Andy, I could talk to you for days, but I know we're on a tight deadline. It's been an absolute privilege to speak to you. And well, I look I, I know they, they tend to give very short interviews in South Africa. I don't know why, but thank you. We finally got to talk and um, hopefully we'll see you in April. Oh, you will. No, no question. I'll, I'll right. be there with a banner of some description. But thank yeah, you. Yeah, go, go. Play my favourite. <laughs> yeah, or else. Yes. <laughs> All, right. All right, Jason. Great to talk to you. Take care. Now. Likewise. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.